Good afternoon, everybody in YouTube. This is Rick Thomas from Obsolete Video Services. Hey, guys, I thought I'd do some cool things discussing this machine today. Uh, we are in my living room in my house. Uh, it is 109 degrees out today here in Arizona. So I brought my project here in the living room in my studio area so I can actually finish it up and start using this thing. Uh, this is an Ampex VR7000. You guys know I already got the machine working. We're just correcting the speed problem, which you know we're rebuilding the uh, the DA board. And uh, this is uh, the board that actually runs the scanner. We got a lot of the parts in. As you can see, we got the CAN capacitors. I changed out all the resistors. I got some other diodes I have to change, maybe four more. And we have to change this large kick capacitor at the end. Once I change all that out, this board will virtually be brand new and we'll be, we'll be able to reinstall it in this Ampex VR7000 black and white machine. Now, what's very cool about this machine is this was around during NASA, folks. You know, these machines came out in 67. This is a very cool machine. I think of it as sort of like being on Lost in Space, like the Jupiter 2. I mean, all the, the, you know, the type of tape, you know, they had this type of old school equipment on the Jupiter 2. It's very similar to being on the Jupiter 2 and Lost in Space. But this is basically what's cool about this is um, this machine was during the NASA time when NASA was you know, doing their space program and they had machines like this. They had uh, some custom two inch machines, I know that, but I, I was told they also had Ampex one inch machines such as these. So, like I said, the, these uh, moon landing tapes, they, they, they're gonna be found. You know, I know there's a lot of missing stuff out there for the Apollo missions, and I hope they're found, and I hope they come my way to do the restoration work on these. Due to the fact, you know, I'm probably going to have the only Type A brand new machine in the entire world that's going to be able to do these. So, uh, but it would be awful nice to be able to actually do the Apollo stuff. I know they had machines like this besides the two-inch quad machines, custom ones they had that they were using as well. But if I can get a hold of some of their one-inch stuff, if it ever comes my way, we will transfer it. I'd love to be able to do that archive. But what's so cool about this, this VR7000, it is the, it, I'm telling you, this has been a hell of a ride fixing this machine. We're talking some butt-ass work to restore a machine that's from the late 60s with no parts available. All the mechanics on this stuff is all one-off, and there is no replacements. Besides rebuilding all the boards with capacitors and everything else, we, you know, we got the meters working. We rebuilt uh, the audio stack on this side, which had to be done custom. It's got a brand new video head installed. I had to rebuild the, uh, the, the uh, transformer up on top that transmits the signal from the head to the preamp board. Everything has been done custom and new on this machine. Uh, all brand new belts, rubber tires, you name it, including... Uh, all new capacitors all the way around, the audio board. This has been a hell of a project getting this 1960s VTR Type A machine, one inch machine working. This has been a bear getting this machine working, guys. This is early 60s technology. There is no replacement parts for these. I mean, capacitors is probably the only thing really that's user friendly to change on this, and you can get the belts which were used on sewing machine uh, units, those are still available. You just have to have the right sizes. But, you know, things like the meters, the buttons, you know, this is a one-off machine with parts that just don't exist anymore. I, I actually love this machine. This is one of my pride and joy machines for a restoration project besides my, my IVC machine over here, which is from around the exact same time frame. These two machines are so fantastic as far as mechanical-wise, and they're just so cool to look at. They're from the 1960s, early 1970, very cool. But this is a very cool machine. It's got the Apollo, you know, it was designed with the Apollo missions, I think, design-wise, because of the Apollo missions during that time frame. Because look at this stuff, it's all Apollo, the Apollo missions look to it. You know what I mean? It's got such a cool vibe to it when you look at it. You know, the meters. Remember on the Apollo panels, they had exact meters like these. I mean, it's just all during the time of the Apollo missions, when the Apollo missions was using the very adequate Ampex 
uh, parts because a lot of a lot of the uh, parts on the uh, on the Apollo missions they, they used a lot of Ampex parts uh, were used on the Apollo missions you know, like the meters and gauges and different things they were a very big supplier for the Apollo missions so from that point they carried it on into their video equipment obviously so it's, it's such a cool thing but we're going to be having this machine up and running in a matter of days folks we got the um, we got the uh, motor drive board virtually completely done. So all I got to do is install that and make some adjustments to lock up the speed. This thing had a lot, uh, this board had a lot of failures to it. I mean, a lot of diode failures due to just crappy components. Uh, so we didn't take any chances. We're rebuilding the entire, the entire board. I got one capacitor and a few other diodes still on order. I'm waiting to get by the end of the week. But... We replaced everything on this, except for the transformers, of course, but they ain't bad. But as far as component-wise, and I found those Derister uh, transistors, those were a bear to get. Very expensive as well, but we did get four new ones of those. So within a week, I'll be able to uh, pop up in my system over here. We'll connect the Ampex 1-inch machine, and you guys will start seeing how this machine actually starts doing tape transfers. I do have... Some Apollo uh, videotapes myself uh, to convert, a couple of them actually, that were recorded off air. And I'm going to start with those first. And we're going to get some transfers done. And, and plus, you know, like I said, guys, this is a this is a impossible machine to fix. If, if it's broke, it really is. You just can't get parts. You have to really think out, outside of the box on this early 60s stuff. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video.